Hey guys, Tubular. Today we're checking out Kronstadt. Uh, it's the campaign reward ship, tier 8 Russian heavy cruiser. I got Delightful there. Delightful's kind of made for these type of ships. Uh, Stalingrad, Kronstadt, Riga. There's the armor scheme. Note the lack of the icebreaker, which is a heavily reinforced bottom half of the nose. The entire nose is kind of a weaker armor scheme. Can take some damage there, um, but overall pretty tanky. Uh, but getting back to Delightful, really focused on the accuracy, which these ships, if you're not using those commanders, have kind of a battleship-esque uh, accuracy at times. It's a, you know, it's a balancing factor because the shells can hit quite hard. Yes, but um, that's a little bit frustrating. So if you got Delightful, of course, I would probably put them on here. Still figuring out the Kronstadt. I played 10 games on this one so far. Uh... Out of the three new ships this week, Burgon, uh, the Rupee, and the Kronstadt. I'd say Kronstadt's caught my attention the least. However, I don't dislike it. It just hasn't uh, captured my imagination yet. The guns, unlike the Stalingrad, the Stalingrad's guns when I'm playing it now, especially with this build, they're just like, ooh, man, look out. We've been getting 50k rippers on battleships and just devastating shots left and right. These shells, they can hit hard, yes, but the accuracy, is so, the accuracy is so wonky that to get those devastating shots, especially at longer ranges, haven't really been uh, dialing up a lot of them yet. So maybe I've just been aiming poorly, maybe I've been getting some bad rolls, or maybe that's just the difference. You know, we can't expect Stalingrad here at Tier 8. That's a legendary tier ship, Stalingrad, so it's got to be a little bit worse, right? Makes sense. But Kronstadt, I think, is a pretty well-balanced campaign reward ship. So it's not going to be one of the super overpowered ones. Um, at least not, that's not what I'm thinking about it yet. Those of you guys that have been checking it out, of course, I want to hear what you guys think about this as well. Now, interestingly enough, I feel like the Kronstadt is a little bit tankier. Usually, if you're playing Riga, there's a Riga right there. Or the Stalingrad, kind of the main ideas with those ships is if you're angling really well, survivability through the roof. Uh, but as soon as you show a broadside, you pretty much die on contact. This one I've been finding is a little bit more forgiving of mistakes. I don't know if the Citadel is just a little bit more protected or what the deal is. Or, uh, once again, it could just be my limited experience. But Kronstadt, for me, it's it's a little less straightforward. You know, I'm still, the jury's still out on the guns for me. The jury's still out on the armor. i got to keep putting it in situations. But, uh, overall, I think it's a pretty capable ship, and I will continue to play it. Um, so that's kind of the synop the overview of how I feel about it. Maybe we'll do a little bit more of a dive into the stats, maybe not. We'll see as the game progresses here. But jumping into the game here, we are we deployed on the A side. I did move towards the middle to utilize this island. That'll be blocking us from the right hand side of the map, protecting our sides. And we can angle towards the north here. We got a bulk of the force there. We do have the Riga that's kind of, you know, he's attempting to stop and utilize that island. If he continued to move forward, we'd have to attack his sides because he would have access to our sides. But in the meantime, I'm just keeping an eye on the map, seeing who's pushing forward, see if we can get any penetrating shots. Evan, thanks for subbing. And thanks everyone who has subscribed recently for subbing. We are very close to 25,000 subscribers, actually. And we got ships galore. We got, I think it's seven or eight premium ships to give away. I'll have to double check and a bunch of uh, event crates as well. So, how are we going to be getting these? Well, you got to be subscribed to this channel, and there's going to be giveaways on the second channel, Bowl Bites. The link to that is in the description. And then, once we hit the actual number, if we actually ever do hit it, then there'll be, start to be some giveaways on the videos and potentially in the community tab section. So, stay tuned for both of those channels. I'm uh, getting forced back a little bit here now. We got a lot of health, and I'm being careful here. I don't want to be getting a shot in the side, but I'm trying to limit how many of these ships can be shooting me at once because these kind of grinding, sustaining fights, and the first half of this game is kind of a grinding, uh, see who can sustain type of a fight. Uh, it's, you don't want multiple ships shooting at you, right? We want to be trading shots relatively equally, especially if these guys are showing some side that we could potentially access, um, but trying to limit who can fire at us there. And there you see... Vlad did hit the nose, and it did not uh, do damage, so uh, interesting armor schemes, but it was pretty steeply angled there. You never know with these things, and then the aims up a little bit there, get some decent damage, about 6k, so, you know, 
nothing too, nothing horrible that we can't handle. Now, taking a look at the health pool, that is a stat we would want to point out. 71,050 on this. Now, I'm looking at some of my other uh, tier 8 cruisers like Rune. We got 49,500, so just shy of 50. And this is, you know, dramatically higher than that, which is, you know, compare that to the Dmitry Donskoy, which is uh, 43,400, I believe. Still working on upgrading that ship. Uh, but uh, substantial, substantially more health. So very tanky in that regard. And Radar, jumping back in the game here. Coming up in 10 seconds, Kagero on the loose. Now we do have HE in this thing. I've been using the AP quite a bit. Uh, the AP is damaging for sure, but the HE actually is pretty decent as well. It's got very high damage values, and the fire chance is 24%, which is quite high compared to Buffalo, 14, Rune, 15 so, I mean, you can see there that the fire starting chance good. The damage, we got 4,200 uh, compared to 2,800, 2,700 on the Buffalo and Rune, respectively. So, not a bad shell. Again, the damage is going to get limited just because a lot of the shells are just going to be flying all over the place. Um, but in general, I find, you know, I'm still in the testing the AP phase, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, but still trying to force the AP in. So, maybe that will evolve over time as we continue to learn how to play the ship. But... Um, that's that's my preference so far. Uh, trying to get away from the Zeitan here. I'm assuming he's coming through the gap. That's basically the rear of our ship is pointing out on the map. You can see him grayed out currently, but he's very close. Number one, I wasn't protecting myself. He would have come around. I could have potentially been angled or rather shown broadside if he rushed me at that point in time. And then a withering secondary attack close range and torpedoes. We don't have torpedoes on this thing. So advantage to the Zeitan close range. We want to increase the distance here. Hoping the rig is going to peak. I'd love to blast him. Kagero getting away. Um, but eventually we kind of have to decide here uh, what we're going to do. So we do have the radar available. And it's the long range, shorter duration Soviet radar. Uh, so if this Kagero drops and it looks like people are going to hit him. Well, the Vlad certainly not because he took a suicide rush to the jaw. Uh, but these other guys. we got a cruiser pointing up and the battleship. So we do pop the radar there. Cruiser, great job. Ready to fire. Blast him and we finish him off there. Uh, with the AP shell. So, pretty good teamwork there to get the destroyer off. Both red destroyers off the board. We've lost one of ours. Uh, the other one's still alive south of A. So, both teams have a cap. Uh, pretty interesting uh, setup here. And at this point in time, when I'm like, okay, what should I be doing? I'm looking at the map. I'm like, eh, this actually could be an interesting game. And I think from this point forward, it winds up being uh, relatively interesting. So, they're pushing into the home cap D. You can see the Prince Eugene. Followed by the Zeitan, who was formerly threatening us with his position. Uh, but now they're pursuing the cruiser, who's got about 60% of his health. And they're pushing the base, more importantly, from my perspective. Because they do have a 150-point lead. Uh, 140 points, whatever it is. And we're tied in ship. So we got to be making sure that they're not getting another cap. Because if that's the case, if we go down three caps to one in this tight, tight of a game, uh, then we're in trouble. All right, so Eugene coming around here. He's broadside. He doesn't know we're here quite yet. Tension pointed southward. And whammo. And that's what we're talking about. If we do get these shots, uh, we can do some damage. There one, it was basically a settle shot. It looks like a bunch of overpens. But I don't know if you've been paying attention to the hit markers on this game. And I've been I've been paying attention to all the games I've been playing. I've seen a lot of shatters and just odd, you know, results. Where once again, if I'm firing the same shots with the Stalingrad, I'm kind of feeling pretty good about it. Not... I'm not saying this is a good example right here with the Eugene, because obviously we're uh, smashing him to bits uh, broadside. But against some of the battleships, like even broadside Musashis, I've had some shots where I'm like, okay, this could be juicy. What? Five shatters. Interesting. You know, the guns just don't seem quite as reliable. And Riga, while smaller caliber guns, you know, at the tier it's at, I feel like those guns are more threatening as well. But uh, anyway... We've had some decent shots on these cruisers. Certainly Buffalo just got uh, demolished. Dropped him down to about 40% of his health uh, with a couple of nasty strikes. And we piled up a lot of damage there in about two or three pulls of the trigger. So the spike damage is there. The reload, ponderous and slow. Holy God, we got a, what is it, 18-second reload, which feels quite long at the tier. That's the longest that I've got written down for sure. I haven't written the Obuki or Dmitry Donskoy's stats down yet, but... Those are both quicker reloads as well. Buffalo, 9.5. Rune, 10.2. And Kronstadt, 18 seconds. So, I mean, this is not a high damage per minute ship by any means. But 
the spike damage, kind of like the theory of the battleship, where we're not high damage uh, vessels in a battleship either, but the possibility of a boom, one-shot knockout persists. Okay, and it does exist as well with the Kronstadt. It's just the accuracy uh, not as uh, great as I would hope to get it. Uh, but our our buddy Meta, he keeps telling us we got to get uh, 16.4 in this Delightful, which the, the slot four perk on this guy really boosts the accuracy. So if we get another 15 commendations and, you know, however many insignias, maybe we can get all the way up there. Anyway, we're trying to finish the Buffalo off, and you'll see as the game goes uh, by why we would. Of course, he is a dangerous cruiser to begin with. Yes, he's got the radar. That's a major problem, especially if you got a destroyer. And that's our main advantage right now is having the destroyer. Destroyer just sitting there spotting. That's an interesting play that it's usually a sign of a more advanced uh, player unless they're doing it inadvertently. But he's just kind of sitting there spotting, which is fine. He can't push C, certainly not with the radar cruiser. And he can't really push into B because uh, the bulk of the force is in between him and there. So he's just electing the spot. And that's a fine play that you don't often see the destroyers uh, pull. Here comes a Republic. He's coming around here. Now, we're going to be within his secondary range, so we've got to be careful of that. Pretty decent shot there. Six pens, no citadels, yes, but kind of a lot of damage there. Baffled how the Riga is just chasing the heck out of this uh, Musashi who can smash him to bits. Um, <laughs> but hes uh, I, I guess he forgot about him, or I don't know what happened. As soon as I saw this developing, I was like, okay, this is a problem. we got to swing around here. To get our guns on the Riga, which we have to do, we got to keep this Musashi alive. Now we're pointing broadside at the Republic. Not what I want to be doing with my life at this point in time. Uh, but we do get the Riga off the board. We're going to bounce off this island and then hopefully back up and angle against the Republic, who could potentially one-shot us here if he pushes forward. In fact, a glorious play for him would be uh, one-shotting me while ramming the Musashi. That'd be a hell of a clip for bull bites <laughs> if I pulled that one off. Uh, anyway... That'd be the play I'm attempting to make, but we're trying to angle as quickly as possible. And yeah, we got the island to the right-hand side of the screen blocking the other ship, so real, really the Republic currently is the only one I'm worried about. Kudazawa I'm keeping an eye on, number one, because I'd love to blast him uh, in outer space if he comes around that corner broadside, but number two, he does close range, have a potentially withering uh, AP attack as well. Musashi's dead, we got a destroyer down who's perilously close to these guys over here especially uh, with that kudazov uh, the quick firing cruiser guns there a little close to my com for my comfort he does get the zeitan great play there i would try and get c if i was him of course he still has the buffalo uh unspotted and unattended so he's probably got a better idea where that buffalo is than i do uh, but i'd be keeping an eye on the map seeing if that play is available at least kudazov would get some decent damage on there a uh, moment ago high cal confederate sure we got all the medals Three kills. Can we get the Kraken? Well, we got to start thinking about that. But look at the survivability of this. Like, we've taken a lot of shots. We're into this game relatively late. Yeah, they're getting some damage. And he on there on the Kutuzov with a vicious strike um, to put it at four kills, 150k damage. But, you know, trying to angle here. And, oh, God, there's the Buffalo. We don't see him, but we kind of know he's to the northeast now. And he's a major AP threat as well, so that's a problem. Trying to blast the Republic's guns. There's the AP. Oh, God. How do we get out of this? Well, we can't really... We should probably be turning to the south, I guess, and just foregoing one or two reloads worth of shots while the turrets spin and the turret traverse is slow on this ship as well. 35.3. I'll mention that stat. Uh, very slow turret traverse. So, I mean, there's problems once they achieve this uh, crossfire position. Uh, that we're not likely to get out of here. If I can kill the Republic or if one, he catches one of these Torps, that would be outstanding. Then maybe we can radar the Buffalo or something or create some sort of play late in the game. He does get a Torp on there. Ah, doesn't quite get him. All right, he's got about 6K health left. I got a chance that we're getting secondary to death here. We're getting shot by the Buffalo. Boom, he gets us there. Trying to see if we can put a big full salvo into the superstructure. Looks like we got about three hits a moment ago, a few thousand damage. Not enough. All right, now, Kagero, at this point in time, we're down in the score dramatically. Uh, he's basically got to go for a quick strike suicide rush and then hope to find that buffalo. I can't remember exactly what the buffalo's health situation is at this point in time, um, but he's got to basically try and gun him down. So the odds are very long here. He's going to wind up getting blasted point blank range. Anyway, Kronstadt, I feel, is a pretty middle of the pack in terms of campaign reward ships, which are usually pretty good. And I think Kronstadt might be pretty good. 
Okay, I'm still, this is an early impressions video, I just like to get you guys a quick look at it uh, while I'm figuring it out. But as of right now, it just doesn't seem like it's a super powerful ship. So I'll take that in mind. That's a look at the crunch app for you guys. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming for you all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys. And we'll see you all later. Peace.